Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and we're going to have some fun here. I'm doing chocolate mint on a wood cutting board. We're going to make our own coloring page. So let's get started. I'm going to be using the Hanamule Mixed Media Bamboo Paper. This is 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. It's a great paper for drawing on, but you can use anything. And I'm using this particular reference from Unsplash. It's a free to use website and it's free to get your references. And I do really like doing quick sketches for warm up. Just look at the image and just draw what you see and don't make it hard. That was a, you know, a 15 second sketch. But it gave me a quick warm up and an idea what I wanted to do for this particular piece of art. I am using my fingers and looking at the negative space in the photograph to figure out where the cup gets placed, where the cutting board was placed, where the plate is placed. Uh, just some general little tick marks to get started. It doesn't have to be super involved and detailed. Now I do move a little bit quick, but this is not a quick sketch. I took about 25 minutes to do this sketch live on a live marathon video. So if you're interested in hearing what I was talking about while I was doing the actual drawing during the video marathon that was 14 hours long, this was just the second one. I was still pretty fresh here. <laughs> I've got a eye card up at the top corner so that you can hear, you know, what I'm saying during the actual video. But I figured this way I could cut out a few of the extra chatty bits and sort of condense the drawing down. In just a second, I will be sliding it down so that you can see how the handle of the cutting board all went in. I'm figuring out where the cup and the plate are going to sit. And, you know, by looking at those negative spaces and drawing what I see, not what I think, is really the big lesson that I want you to learn. Draw what you actually see and not what you think you're looking at because things are going to look weird. Things are going to feel out of perspective or out of shape. You can make them, you can refine them, you can get them back into the shape you want them to be. We're just using a pencil and that I'm using a mechanical pencil, but you can use any kind of pencil. It doesn't need to be, you know, a fancy pencil. Fancy pencils don't draw any better than a number two school pencil. Truthfully, it's learning to connect your eye with your hand and the tip of your pencil. So practicing, putting lots of lines on the paper and then using an eraser. I use a kneaded eraser when I'm doing my sketches like this, just because kneaded erasers, you can mush down, you can take off a lot of the graphite or you can just take a tiny bit off. With a kneaded eraser, I also kind of clutch my kneaded eraser. It's sort of my security blanket when I'm drawing. I don't know. Does anybody else have that? Do you have something that you kind of hold on to while you're drawing? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird that way. I want you to take the time to just observe. Get the shapes. Go back in and refine your lines as you're going because you can always erase 
if you get too many lines, like I've done here. I've erased, I've gone back in, I've, uh, you know, put, put new lines in, take lines out. You're the one in control here. And don't be a slave to the reference. It doesn't have to look like the reference when you're done. At least the way I do art. When I'm doing sketches like this, I'm trying to get the feeling of what I'm looking at. I'm not necessarily going to make a perfect ellipse for my plate or for the top of the cup. I'm not necessarily going to have perfect perspective. That's not what I'm here to do. What I'm here to do is to have fun and to get my heart into some of this artwork. It's really amazing how after you've drawn a lot of things, you just naturally start to draw things with certain style of line, certain ways that you like to put your visual vocabulary onto the page. I've drawn a lot of cups. I've drawn a lot of plates. I've drawn a lot of leaves. I've never drawn a wooden cutting board before this particular drawing. But you know what? It's basically drawing a box. And that's how I handle all of these things. I drew tons and tons of boxes when I was little because I loved the magic of taking two squares and connecting the lines to make it look like it was quote unquote, 3D. Uh, so I have that visual vocabulary in my brain of what a box looks like. How when you turn a box, it changes shape and becomes something new and exciting and different. So don't, don't be frustrated if you're having a problem getting things on your paper. If you look at this, I am going back in. I am changing the shape of my plate. I change the shape of things. I'm not worried about it being perfect the first time I put a pencil line down. Remember that you are learning a whole new language. That's what I want people to understand when they're drawing when they're painting, when they're being creative, if you haven't done it ever or haven't done it for a long time, it's like learning a new language again. It's like developing new pathways in your brain to express what you're thinking in a visual way. So just like a person learning a new musical instrument, you wouldn't expect them to pick up a violin and be able to just put their hands on the fretboard or on the fingerboard and put the bow on the strings and be able to hit the strings with their fingers in the right way every single time to get the music and then to pull the bow at the same time and get the music. It's going to be screechy. It's going to be scratchy. It's going to sound terrible, probably for quite a while. So it's the same with putting a pencil on a piece of paper. If it's a new language, if it's a new skill, it's going to be scratchy. It's going to be lopsided. It's going to have imperfections. And celebrate your imperfections because there are people now who are trying to draw with that naive, wonderful beginner look that have been, be, that they're, they're artists. They've been doing art for 30, 40, 50 years, and they're trying to get back to that freshness that you have when you're a beginner. So celebrate your uh, beginning art and make sure that you don't throw away your beginning art put it in a folder and in a year go back and look at it and look at those lines and look at the way that you created something that was actually beautiful that you didn't think was beautiful when you first did it 
I'm getting teary about that because that's really important. That is something special that is very difficult to capture again once you move beyond. And many people never move beyond that that stage, and that's awesome. If that is the style that pulls your heartstrings, oh my gosh, you hit it on the first try? Wow. Now try and do it again. Try and draw the same thing again. It's going to be different. It's going to have a different quality to it. It's going to have sometimes a bit more confidence in your lines. Even if you keep your shapes similar, you're going to end up with confidence every time you put the pencil down. Sometimes you want that light, sketchy. Uh, you know, when I'm going in here and I'm working on this cup and I'm putting these sort of sketchy lines in, I'm working out Am I going to have some shadow down here? Am I going to have the foot of this cup down here? Am I going to be able to get, you know, the chocolate to fit? Am I going to... And the chocolate is just drawing more boxes. Look at that. Little squares. That's all it is. Easy shapes. Don't be confused by the complexity of the reference. Squint your eyes, look at your reference, look where there's light and look where there's dark. That's how I find my shapes. I see a dark rectangle in the middle between these two squares. I see a light sort of parallelogram rectangle shape on the edge I see a dark shape right down here on the front edge, but it's just rectangles or circles or squares. Don't think of it as I'm drawing a bar of chocolate and a bar of chocolate means this to me. Draw what you see, not what you think you see. Yeah, it's, it's that easy. Remember that you are the one in control of your picture. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Probably I'll say it again in this video. Just because you have a reference doesn't mean you have to make it look exactly like it. Okay, we're just going to continue drawing the chocolate in and I will draw in some mint leaves. And this is just kind of a peaceful thing. It's, I sort of turned this into a little podcasty feel, didn't I? Wow. <laughs> I've never done that. Just have fun, guys. And we're going to listen to some music here for a little bit. I'm going to continue drawing these pieces in. I'm drawing with the pencil for the entire time. And then I will do a fast forward on the inking of the artwork. Just because it's drawing over the lines. And I'm just choosing one line out of all of the lines. I choose one line with my pen. I don't, I'm not sketchy when I ink. At least I try not to be. I try to give things a more solid line. Remember, I'm making coloring pages here. So I don't want the shadows to be drawn in. I will keep my inking super simple. Uh, even if I put shadows in with my pencil, I'm going to erase them out because I'm not doing that type of a rendering on this particular type of art I want clean black lines clean white spaces so that for a coloring page it works I want to leave people room to do their own artwork when they color my coloring books oh if you're interested these all of the artwork from the Cozy Creative is in a coloring book. The iCard is up above. The direct link to my Amazon page, my bookshelf, with all of the coloring books that I've drawn. So if you're interested in my art, check out the coloring books. And if you're interested in owning this so that you can print it out on any paper that you want, I do ha have it available as a downloadable book 
on Teespring. I've got about four or five books on Teespring that you can download and print on any paper that your printer will print on. So check those out. That's my little commercial. Help my studio. I really appreciate you guys watching and commenting. Ask questions in the comment section below the video. And make sure that if you have specific questions, something that I'm doing in this video or something you want to see me do in future videos, make sure and leave those comments. I want to continue this artwork, but I am going to say thank you for being here, for watching, sharing, subscribing to the channel, and, you know, finding joy in your artwork, finding joy in your life. We're all creative people, and we all deserve to share our creativity. So if you want to share your art or share something creative with me, make sure and tag me at Deliberately Creative on your social media when you share things. And I will certainly come by and say hi and thank you and uh, let you know how creative I think you are because I think we're all awesome creative individuals. So there, let's listen to some music.
Alright, so as I'm finishing up here doing the inking, I wanted to mention the pen I'm using is a waterproof pen, but I have not seen it available in the last couple months, so I'm not recommending it anymore. I am recommending you use either the Uniball Signo RT1, which is an office pen, fine point permanent uh, waterproof ink. Second is the Pigma Micron by Sakura, and third is the Pit Pens by Faber-Castell. Go in, after you're all done inking, make sure your ink is dry, and then erase all the pencil lines. Oh my gosh, it just makes such a difference. I want you to make sure that you are having fun. Do it when it's fun, but sometimes when you're not having fun, you're learning something. So, you know, you can keep doing that. If you're interested in seeing how I colored this in using watercolor, this is just a little clip from the end of that video. The video is up above in the iCard and down below in the more information box. I had a lot of fun. It was done live, so it's a longer lesson, but you can always put it on fast forward. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Oh, and thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon. I really appreciate you being there. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.